Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, Theo and I are gonna tell you how to make your coop better for the winter. Now, there are five things that I've changed for this winter that I didn't do or did kind of poorly last year and learned a few lessons from. Number one, I, for this year, have moved the food and water outside of the coop. Now, reason being, Last year, they the chickens made a, a kind of a big mess of the food. They would spill it uh, out uh, out of the feeder, and it would kind of mix in with the with the bedding, and then it would get a little bit wet from the water splashing on it, and it kind of just rotted and it smelled badly, and it just didn't seem like a very hygienic situation. So for this year, I've moved both the food in the water outside. I look, I'm looking, I see us. I've moved the food and the water outside. Um, and this means though, that you will have a little bit extra labor. The water, when it was inside the coop last year, did not freeze that often. If it was a really cold day, it would freeze, but most of the time it did not. For this year, moving it the water outside, um, I've been filling it uh, fresh with fresh water every morning and every afternoon when I go out to collect the eggs. Um, I just break the ice off, dump the water out, pour the new water in. That's number one. Move your food and water outside. For number two, I have started to mix in some diatomaceous earth into the feed. Um, I've been doing this every uh, probably two or three times a week, um, depending on how, how the birds look. Uh, last year, we definitely had some, some sickness and uh, we, we ended up losing a couple birds because of that. And over the summer, we were at a farmer's market and I asked uh, a woman there who was selling eggs, you know, how, what she did over the winter. And she told me that they fed their hens some diatomaceous earth if they started to see any sign of sickness and to her the main sign of sickness in her birds was either uh, like an audible coughing or sneezing sound um, or a visual uh, like poopy butt essentially they would have uh, some 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 feces on their on their tail feathers or on their on their butt um, so we definitely had both of those situations happen last year and so this year I've been mixing in the diatomaceous earth in their food, and so far, uh, that has really cleared it up. Um, another sign of sickness in your birds is poop on the eggs. If there's poop on the eggs, that uh, is just a good indicator. So those are things to look out for if you have sickness in your birds, uh, poop on their butts, poop on the eggs, and a coughing or sneezing sound coming from them. So. Number two thing I'm doing this year is mixing in some diatomaceous earth in their feed to help solve the sickness. Now, the third thing that I've been doing this year that I did uh, not so well last year, or I thought I was doing well last year, but it turns out I really wasn't. So we are in our coop utilizing a deep bedding situation that uh, I believe Joel Salatin has kind of popular, popularized. And last year, I had a mixture of wood chips, hay, and uh, the wood shavings that you would purchase from uh, you know, a farm supply store. Now, this on the surface seemed like a great thing to do. The hay and the, the wood chips and the, uh, the shavings it's all great sources of carbon. And carbon is what absorbs the, uh, the bad things, you know, poop and pee, essentially, from the, from the birds. However, what I did not predict was that the hay would essentially form a extremely thick layer that was kind of impenetrable. Like you, couldn't, you couldn't turn it uh, to incorporate the poop down into the layers. Um, it just for it, it capped essentially the top layer, so the poop was very exposed and did not get absorbed uh, like I had predicted. So for this year, 
I'm only mixing in wood chips and wood shavings. And what I've been doing every other day about, I've been just taking a pitchfork and turning the very top layer over um, so that the poop becomes incorporated. And this so far, it's only you know the first week of January, but it, so far it's been working very, very well. The, the wood shavings and the wood chips are very, I guess, fluffy, so you can mix them up easily and it just appears to be working uh, pretty well. So for number three, only use wood chips or wood shavings and don't skimp out. For number four, I've been putting some hay inside the run. Now, the reason being last year, I noticed that the chickens did not want to walk on the snow. Um, so for this year, I've been putting some hay down into the run for them to step on uh, and kind of just clearing away the snow, you know, to create a little path for them to walk. And that has really, you know, encouraged them to, to leave the coop and go into the run and spend some time outside and get some sunshine, which is another uh, health benefit for them. And also moving the water and the food outside encourages them to go outside more as well. So as you, as you kind of see a theme here is everything is, is trying to improve the, the health of, of the birds because I don't want them to, to die because it really sucks to replace them. So number four, put some hay in the run, create a spot for them to walk if you uh, live in a snowy area and uh, you should have some happy birds. For number five, I've been feeding the birds some of their own eggs. Now this might seem strange, but last year I noticed that the birds would eat some of their own eggs like right after they had laid them. One would jump out and another one would jump in and, and eat the egg right out of the nesting box. So I believe that this is because they are, are lacking uh, some animal protein or some bug protein in, in their diet because it's winter there's no bugs around they're not uh, you know eating grasses and seeds and insects like they normally would in the spring summer and fall so I've been feeding them some of their own eggs uh, just like one or two uh, a, a day really and then if we have some meat scraps like raw meat scraps I, uh, I've been feeding those to the chickens as well, just to get them some extra animal protein. Now, I don't know if you can feed cooked meat to them. I'm sure you probably could, but I haven't looked into that too much and I haven't really heard anything, uh, you know, about people doing that too much. I know that people who uh, hunt have fed the carcasses of deer or you know, rabbits or squirrels or whatever that they are hunting they fed the you know the excess meat and scraps to their chickens over the winter to give them some extra animal protein um, and, that, and that again just helps uh, with their with their health as well so that's number five now I hope th that these five things will help you keep your birds happy and healthy over the winter months and I look forward to hearing from you in the comments so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.